Now let's talk about the API management infrastructure. And let's go to the pricing tier one more time. And as you can see here, developer tier provide no scaling for extra units for the API management. However, when you go to the other tiers, you can scale your API management to multiple instances according to your tier. So when you go back to the locations, you can see here that my API management is only hosted in Australia East and I have only one unit. And I cannot scale this up anymore because this is the maximum limit of the developer tier. And of course, when you are in other tiers, you will be able to scale your API management to multiple units according to your tier. Now I want you to note the virtual network availability in different tiers. It's available only in developer and premium tier. And of course, you cannot use a developer tier in production workload because there is no SLA for the developer tier. And this is one of the things that makes the premium tier pretty expensive in addition to the unlimited scaling and how many requests it can handle per each unit. Sometimes you might need to provide a public accessibility to your APIs, like the big API providers in the world. However, in some situations you might need to restrict the accessibility to your APIs to your organization only. And this is when you should consider putting your API management in an internal VNet. And let's go ahead and see how can we do this. Before we go ahead, I want you to notice something in the overview tab here. You may notice that we have only one public IP address is associated with our API management. And when we go and place our API management in an internal VNet, we are going to have two IP addresses assigned to our API management, public IP address and a private IP address. Let's go ahead and see how can we do this. Let's go to virtual networks. Let's click on internal. Let's select a VNet. Probably it's better to go ahead and create a new virtual network. Now let's go ahead and add a new virtual network and let's put it in dev resource group and call it API internal VNet and put it in Australia East region and leave everything else to the default values. Now let's go ahead and create this VNet. Now let's go to our virtual network and go to subnets and let's add one more subnet. Let's call it API management subnet. And let's leave everything to the default values. Now let's go back to our API management and probably we need to refresh this page one more time. Let's select internal and select a VNet. And let's select API internal VNet that we just created and select API management subnet. And now let's go ahead and save our changes. And it's going to take between 15 to 45 minutes for our changes to take place. So I'm going to pause the recording and get back to you when it's done. After 30 minutes or so, our changes has been applied and now our API management is hosted in an internal VNet and in the subnet that we have specified before. Now let's go back to the overview and note something. And as you can see here, now we have two IP addresses associated with our API management, public IP address and a private IP address. And this will only happen when you put your API management in an internal VNet. If you are going to put your API management in an external VNet, you are only going to get one public IP address only. Now let's go back to our APIs and see how this change is going to affect our APIs. Let's go to LinkedIn profile, and let's go ahead and test one of the operations. Let's say get jobs. And let's send a request. As you can see here, we are getting 400 bad requests because the API management is not reachable. 
Now let's try to go ahead and open the developer portal. And again, the developer portal is not accessible anymore. All of this because we have put our API management in an internal VNet. It will not be publicly accessible anymore. Now let's go ahead and create a virtual machine. And we are going to put it in the same virtual network, so it will have access to our API management. Now let's go ahead and create a virtual machine. And let's put it in dev resource group and let's call it API virtual machine. Australia East, no infrastructure redundancy required. And let's select Windows Server 2019. And let's select username and passwords. Then let's go to the network tab. And in here, we are going to put this VM in default subnet. And then let's go ahead to the review and create. And then let's go ahead and create our virtual machine. Now let's go to our virtual machine and let's connect to it using Azure Bastion. And then let's go ahead and click on use Bastion. And for this one, we need to have a subnet with the name of Azure Bastion subnet. So let's go ahead and copy this and click on manage subnet configuration. And we are going to create a new subnet in our VNet with the name of Azure Bastion subnet. And let's go ahead and create this subnet. Now let's go back to the Azure Bastion. And now let's go ahead and create it. Now my Azure Bastion has been created, so let's go ahead and connect to it. Click on Use Bastion, and then let's provide the username and password that we have specified for our VM. And let's click on Connect. Now let's go ahead and open Internet Explorer and try to access the API management, because both of these, Virtual Machine and the API management, are hosted in the same virtual network, but they are in a different subnets but they should be able to access each other, right? Now let's go back to the API management and open the developer portal. And let's copy the URL that's in here. And as you can see, we are still not able to access the API management or the developer portal of our API management, even though being hosted in the same VNet. And to fix this, we need to go to the virtual network, then go to subnets, and then select the subnet where the API management is hosted. And then let's delegate subnet to API management service. And let's go ahead and save our changes. Now, let's go back to our virtual machine and try to test the URL one more time. And as you can see, it's not working because we need to do some updates in the host file. So let's go to C Windows System32 Drivers etc and open the host file. And in here we need to put the private IP address of the API management. In this case 10.1.1.5 and then follow it by the URL of the developer portal. And also need to add one more line for the API management itself. Which we can get from properties, gateway URL, and let's put it in here as well. And let's take out the prefix. Now let's go ahead and save the host file. Now let's go back to the Internet Explorer and test the developer portal one more time. 
And as you can see here, we are able to access the developer portal from the VM. Now let's go ahead and sign in to the developer portal. And as you can see, we cannot sign into the developer portal. And the reason for this is Internet Explorer has enhanced security for Windows servers. And what we need to do is to close Internet Explorer and go to the Windows or Server Manager. Let's click on Configure this local server and then going to IE Enhanced Security Configuration and turn it off. Then let's go back and open Internet Explorer and try to put the developer portal URL one more time. Let's go to sign in and let's put the email address of the user we have created before, username1 at outlook.com. I'm putting the password as well. Here we go. And then going to products, basic products, LinkedIn profile, get profile operation. And let's try this operation and send a request. Here we go, 200 response code and the operation has been succeeded. Now let's go back to the API management and go to the overview. And as you can see here, the repository is disabled for the API management. So let's go ahead and save our API management configuration and settings to a code repository. It's going to make it easier for us when we try to build the CI CD for the API management later on. And we are going to cover this in more detail later on through the course. As you can see here, our API management has been committed successfully to the master branch, which is great. Now let's go and have a look at the other components of the infrastructure, which is external cache. We have already seen the internal cache previously when we have worked with the caching policies, but the external cache is different. This is where you are going to provide a connection string for an external cache for your API management to be able to use. However, it's a good rule of thumb to try to use the internal cache that's already provided in the API management first before consider to have an external cache because it's going to add more money to your monthly bill. Now let's go ahead and see custom domains. And as you can see here, you can create a custom domains or host name for different API management components. However, you would need to provide a certificate for this one. And the easiest way you can create a certificate by using key vault. Now let's talk about gateways. And sometimes they call it self-hosted gateways. And it supports hybrid and multi-cloud environment where it allows an organization to manage all of their APIs, either on-prem or Azure or AWS or any cloud environment, managing all of that from only one single API management instance. And to do so, let's go ahead and add a gateway. Let's call it self-hosted or self-hosted. Yep. Location here is Australia, East, and then you need to select the APIs that you want to have in the self-hosted gateway. Now, when we go into the gateway in here, go to the deployment tab, you will able to see the commands that you will need to run either on Docker or Kubernetes to be able to install or have or provision the self-hosted API management in your Docker or Kubernetes instance. And also, you're able to see the different APIs that you have in your gateway, and also you can add more APIs if you would like. And also, you are able to define host names and the keys for your self-managed or self-hosted API. And by doing so, you are going to lose some of the out-of-the-box features that's already provided in the API management in the Azure portal. Now let's go ahead and clean this up. That's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to join me in the next lecture.